all good things must come to an end. But I guess it just depends on what you mean by good and what you mean by end. I'll explain because there's a lot to explain in that statement, especially with regards to China and gold. Let's explore. The one nation that has been leading the pact in accumulating gold the most ever since 1967, well, looks like that has come to an end, according to a latest announcement from the Chinese Central Bank. They have stopped buying gold, and one would make an inference that that's a pretty big deal. But I'm going to make the argument that it's not as big a deal as you might think. And even though officially the numbers are showing that a decline in the amount of gold that uh, China is buying. Well, I think there's more to the story than just this. And it's not as big of a market mover as some may have suggested as well, too, even though it did move the markets. This is coming to us from Bloomberg. Gold slumps as China's central bank halts 18-month buying spree, says the headline here. Uh, they did not buy any gold last month for the month of May, ending a massive buying spree that ran for 18 months and helped push the precious metal to a record high in May. Spot prices for gold fell 1.5% after the People's Bank of China and its bullion holdings were unchanged at the end of May. The bank had been stocking up its reserves since November of 2022, leading a flurry of purchases by the world's central banks amid rising geopolitical tensions. Now, I'll say here that uh, the big move that we saw late last week on Friday uh, was not due to uh, this action. I think we did see gold drop, no question, but I think uh, the big move that we saw on Friday was wholly independent of this. It just essentially stacked up upon it, which led to gold falling by 3.5%. But think about it, less than half of that was because of this. And I think this actually happened before that. Uh, and regardless, I think that there's more to it. And I think there's going to be, even though the this was a shock, this pretty much stunned the gold market. There's no question about it. But we're talking about China here. I'll get into that in a moment. The article continues. My initial thought is that China, a major drive of the gold rally in the past year, is nowhere near done buying gold, says Ole Hansen, head of commodity strategy at Saxa Bank, he said in an email note. And guess what? I agree with him completely. And by the way, there's more to this story than just what their official holdings are, too. The pause, and that's really what it is, it's a pause, shows that they are balking at the prospect of paying record high prices. And I do think that sooner or later, some of these central banks are going to be influenced by the market price to the point where they're having to pay it. But I think that's a relatively minor thing. Um, and, you know, they could just start buying again. But one thing of note is they're not selling any gold. That means that the gold they've got in their coffers right now is going to still put pressure because it's not being uh, distributed in, upon the regular gold market. I think if we start to see central banks sell uh, significant amounts of gold, that's going to cause the gold price to plummet pretty hard. But I think we're a long ways from that happening, that's for sure. So China is essentially just pausing buying gold. Gold soared to an all-time high above $2,450 an ounce in May, supported by strong central bank buying. The People's Bank of China demand for bullion has come as the world's second biggest economy seeks to diversify its reserves and guard against currency depreciation. First quarter purchases by the world's public institutions were at record levels, with China in the biggest buyer, according to the, to the World Gold Council. The People's Bank of China held its gold holdings at 72.8 million troy ounces in May, which was up from 62.64 million troy ounces before the long stretch of purchases. That's a very significant, um, you know, increase. We're talking well over 10 million ounces, troy ounces, uh, that have been added to the Central Bank of China's coffers. Gold that will not be uh, distributed for sale in the global market. 
Uh, there have been signs that China's demand was cooling as higher prices took their toll. In April, the People's Bank of China bought only 60,000 troy ounces, down from 160,000 ounces in March and 390,000 ounces in February. So yeah, even big central banks do not like it when the prices rise. You know, they buy a little bit less, and that's what's been happening for sure with silver stackers too. They're not buying as much, and gold buyers as well. The country's imports in April, meanwhile, slipped 30% from the previous month. Uh, so that's, that's a pretty remarkable to see this kind of appetite fade a bit with the price rising. But again, they're not selling. The risk for gold bulls is that China's voracious appetite for bullion has left the precious metal vulnerable to any potential shift in demand. The initial price reaction took uh, looks a bit technical, said Nicholas uh, Freppo, head of, uh, of institutional markets at ABC Refinery in Sydney, Australia. It would be surprising if the announcement uh, represents anything other than a pause in the general trend of ongoing official sector demand. Uh, and yes, I do I think that is exactly how we should look at this. It's essentially a pause. Uh, but given that we've been seeing what we've been seeing from central banks around the world, uh, this is uh, cer certainly something that is a surprise, but not totally uh, you know, a game changer for gold prices because they're not selling. And notwithstanding, this is something that's even more important than that. What do we know about China? What we know about China is what we don't know about China. That's right. They are very secretive. Very, very secretive, too. In fact, we know they're one of the largest gold producers, if not the largest gold producer uh, in the world. What does that mean? That means that uh, they are mining gold, and, and the gold they mine, well, they can mine it and don't have to worry about spot price. They only have to worry about what it costs for them to pull it out of the ground. And when it, whatever it costs for them to pull it out of the ground is uh, going to be minimal compared to the spot price, that's for sure. The all in sustaining cost, cost for them uh, is uh, something that uh, they'll certainly be able to sustain for much less than spot price. And they will just add that to their coffers without telling a single soul in the gold market and the official holdings. And many people feel that's exactly what China is doing. And they have a lot more gold than they will have us believe. Uh, and they're keeping it secret and close to the cuff. And uh, that means that uh, more likely they are, you know, it would, I would love to know exactly how much they do have, but I don't think no one really knows. I still don't think they have as much as the United States has at 8,133 tons. However, it very well could be that they have uh, not too far behind what we've got. Um, but who knows? We really just don't know. It's all speculation at this point. But I do think... Uh, in my speculative mind, that they have more than their official numbers present. Uh, of course, there are others that don't believe that the United States has the 8,100 tons of gold. And there are others that don't believe that China has any gold either, or much at all, or that much of it is fake and is just propped up. I've heard multiple different stories, and I've reported on some fairly ridiculous stories with regards to gold in China. It's very controversial. We all know the amount of fake gold that comes out of China that's sold in the U.S. markets. It frustrates many stackers. Many people have lost a lot of money on, on gold. Of course, there's ways to protect yourself with, with gold. In fact, you can do everything from the magnetic test to um, utilizing what's known as the pocket pinger. In fact, uh, the pocket pinger I've demonstrated on other, on other uh, videos. This is what the package looks like. If you order from the affiliate link in the description of this video, but uh, this is a good tool to be able to test the ring factor in gold, uh, as well as silver too. But uh, something to uh, to consider. That's one way to be able to test, of course, as well as the Sigma Metallics um, Precious Metals Verifier, of which I have, is probably one of the better ways of calibrated correctly. It's not a foolproof method. But it's definitely a good way to be able to test your gold. And uh, if you get the one with the uh, with the bullion version, it does have a deeper penetration. That really does help. That's what she said. To be able to find out if the gold is real or not. Uh, XRF machines as well, too. But again, you must think about the depth from which they can be tested. So there you, ha there you have it. An interesting and fascinating event in the world of the precious metals markets gold in particular with china 
It'd be very interesting to see if this does have a, a longer standing impact on the price. I don't think it's going to have too much of, a, of an impact. In fact, who knows, if the price does fall a little bit more uh, due to other market conditions, in other words, summer doldrums or other economic data that will uh, suppress the price of, of gold and silver, well, we might see buying yet again from China and picking up, uh, adding more to their coffers, to their central bank vaults. So very interesting indeed. Let me know what your thoughts are about this story, about gold and China and how they have stopped buying for now. So I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to each and every one of you for taking the time to watch this video. And I wanna encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.